The Holy Gospel according to Mark. King Herod heard of the disciples preaching, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer had been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah, and others said it is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, 
it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birth, to give a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests, and the king said to the girl, Ask me whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, the head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, and yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on the platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So this past week in our Bible study, we did have to search to find some good news in the Old Testament lesson and in this lesson. I mean, when you hear of someone getting killed and going into exile and someone beheaded, you wonder, is there any good news in all of this? Maybe I should have just chosen different lessons. Would that be easier, that we just not talk about it? And the interesting thing in our gospel lesson is notice Jesus does not say a word. Actually, Mark is finishing a story about John the Baptist that he started in the first chapter. No, we don't always like to hear these stories, and many of you may choose not to read or watch stories like this. Unfortunately, this happened. It is reality. How many times in the Bible have we read about the people of Israel going into exile? As human beings, we have continued this cycle of connecting with God and Jesus Christ, and then human nature takes over, and God's definition of mercy and justice begins to fade. From my point of view, I'm seeing this continue in our country today. You see, God's mercy and justice is not about the I, it's about the we. The Ten Commandments are about living in relationship with God and each other. Now, it doesn't mean that individuals are not important. But it does mean that living in community is about making sure our neighbor is taken care of. God's mercy and justice is not about power and control, but about love and respect for all people. In our welcoming statement, we specifically name age, gender identity, a whole host of things that people still struggle with, that we have found that people are not accepted around churches and in our community. I believe God's definition of mercy and justice, though, is for all people. And that's what we are stating in our welcoming statement. But there are leaders companies, foundations, and courts, which seem to have different ideas than we might on God's understanding of mercy and justice 
for all people regardless. The fact that we have a welcoming statement says that we are always working on overcoming these prejudices in our congregation, but what are we called to do outside the doors of our community of faith? And when the voices become stronger to take us backwards, we need to be asking ourselves, what is our voice saying? We have these words in our welcoming statement, so what is our action and voice trying to do to support these claims that we welcome all people? Now, after reading these lessons today from Amos and Mark, we can easily think it's easier to stay quiet. We can easily think that it's easier not to rock the boat. Now, I don't think necessarily by speaking out that we might literally be beheaded, but figuratively, this could happen. Now, yesterday on Facebook, I came across a letter from a bishop from northwestern Pennsylvania. There was a trans person by the name of Pauly who was killed and dismembered. So, yes, this still happens today in our country. Now, even here, Meridian Pride Day is coming up August 10th. There are already negative comments about this on the township's website. Now, we are having an ecumenical worship service at 11 o'clock that day at the pavilion across from the farmer's market. The service will include a lament about LGBTQIA people feeling like other in some churches today. And so at our planning meeting on Thursday, we decided that we would like a police presence in the parking lot during this service. I believe God is setting a plumb line, as we heard about in Amos this morning, in the midst of all the turmoil in our country and communities today. How does Faith Lutheran Church measure up on the plumb line? Amos, shepherd from the southern kingdom, the non-professional prophet, has been called by God to the northern kingdom to prophesy. Prophets did not always have good news for the people. They usually were pointing out how God was not happy with them. In this case, Amos was even talking to a different kingdom about how they did not measure up to what God expected. God used the plumb line to point this out to them. The priest of Bethel, Amaziah, was offended as he was basically being told that he wasn't doing his job. Of course, he ran to King Jeroboam saying that Amos is plotting to get rid of him and he's doing it as an insider. Amaziah told Jeroboam that Amos would destroy the country. Amos was telling the people that Jeroboam would be killed and the people would go into exile. And the only thing Amos could say is that God told him to say this. Now, we have found out most prophets are not well-liked. I don't think we read about one prophet in the Bible who was living in some temple and, you know, being treated extravagantly. They were not well liked. And God said that this was the last straw for the Israelites. But folks, here where the good news does come. Even though they went into exile and came out, God never left them. God was with those people the whole time. I don't believe that God has ever said that God didn't love God's people, but there are always times that God is not happy with us, God's people. 
So Amos did step out courageously, believing that he was doing what God called him to do. God chose Amos, a common, ordinary shepherd, even going to a different kingdom, to give this message to the Israel people. Just as God chose John the Baptist, remember this was a guy who dressed rather peculiarly, ate interesting things, and was living out in the wilderness. And I'm sure if he walked into most of our churches today, we would all wonder if we should usher him right back out the door. But you see, God had called John the Baptist to prepare people for Jesus, to preach repentance and even baptize Jesus. Now, of course, the church leaders did not like him either because basically the church leaders were feeling, oh, I guess he's not, people are not getting God's message. And of course, in the gospel lesson, we saw what happened to the prophet John. He was beheaded. Okay, how many of us are signing up to be a prophet today? Any hands? I mean, that's not something that seems to be a very fun thing to do at all. But in some respect, each one of us are called to be a prophet. Maybe not as exactly as what Amos and John were doing, but as we talked about with the kids today, when we see injustices, God calls us to speak out. And of course, as pastors, we're kind of in a precarious situation because we have people on all different sides, if we want to call it that, and I don't, but have all different views. And we are called to minister to all people. That's why I ask a lot of questions and I don't answer for you. So where does that leave us? First of all, the good news is, is that God was with the Israel people. God was with Amos. God was with John the Baptist and his followers. God is with each one of us today, even when we are called to speak the hard words in our society today. And since we have stated that we welcome all people, the only way that we can make sure that people do feel welcome is that we stand up to the injustices against all. By having this welcoming statement, we are called to do our best to live up to God's definition of mercy and justice for all. Too often today it becomes easier to define for ourselves what that means, and we usually do it around what we are comfortable with. But as people of God, followers of Jesus, sometimes we are called to share what we understand God's definition of God's mercy and justice is for all. We will not always be well received. I believe in the coming months, faith may be called to be speaking the truth as we understand it. Through this time of transition, we are still called to speak God's word of truth and love here and outside the walls of this building. Sometimes it may sound different than other churches and groups. We have stated in our welcoming statement what we believe God's kingdom looks like. In other words, all of these groups of people that we have mentioned, that's what we believe God's kingdom looks like, with all people diverse. So this means that we are called to speak for those who are experiencing injustices for those who are not being heard, even though this may not be easy, 
God walks with us, and God's Spirit will give us the words that we are called to speak. So today, we are reminded that we are called to be prophets. Let us pray. God of mercy and injustice, just as you called Amos and John the Baptist to speak the hard words, sometimes you call us to do it also. It is not something most of us would sign up for. We thank you that even when you call us to do the tough work, you do walk beside us and your spirit will give us the words. We stand ready while holding your hand to be the prophets that you have called us to be. In Jesus' name, amen.